All right, let's take a look at the homework for tutorial 21. Make the poison snake game. It's like this, purple is the poison, makes the snake go faster. And you got your obstacles, everything is good. You press control is the key I chose to make the snake move a little faster. It's good in the early game when the snake moves slow as hell. There you go, so how do we do it? Well, first let's take a look at the history. That's right here. Uh, so we're gonna go Add speed up key controls. That's the first thing I did. In game.h, I added a const expression snake move period speed up. So this is the amount of time between snake moves while you're pressing the control key. And it's 0.15 seconds. So if we go into game.cpp, we see how that is implemented in code. So we add a check here for VK control. If the control key is being pressed, we set snake modified move period, which is just a floating point value. We set that equal to whichever is lower, snake move period or snake move period speed up. And the reason for this is you can imagine as you eat more poison, this period is going to become very low and eventually it's going to become lower than the speed up period. So in that case, if you were to press control and set it to speed up period, it would actually slow the snake down, which is kind of cheating. The whole point is if you eat too much poison, the snake gets too goddamn fast. So what I've done here is I've taken the minimum of these ones. Take whichever one is lower. So in the beginning of the game, it's going to be speed up. As you progress and eat more poison, it's going to eventually be period that is the one that is slower. So we set it initially to move period. Then if control is pressed, we conditionally set it to either uh, speed up or we just leave it as move period. And then down here, we do the same thing. I've just replaced whatever it was before move period now with move or modified move period which is the move period that may or may not have been modified um, via the control key and there you go you've got your your speed up key great what is next yeah food is managed in board all right so i've erased gold at cpp i've erased gold at h we don't need that shit anymore what we got going in board.h well Got a bunch of stuff. Let's look first at the variable. So our grid, our 2D array of bools has obstacles now replaced by a 2D array of ints for the contents because bool can only store two states, true or false, right? But now we have a possibility of three states for any tile. It can have, it can be empty, it can have an obstacle, or it can have food. So, I mean, there's multiple ways you could have solved this. You could have created two arrays, two 2D arrays, one for obstacle, one for food. But that's dumb for a number of reasons. First of all, waste space. Second of all, it's a lot, It's not possible to, for a tile to have both an obstacle and food. So instead of having duplicating those 2D arrays, put it all in the same array. And the state, the, the int value of the array, determines what is contained at that location. Nothing, an obstacle or food. I added three speed up, but that's for the future. Got a little ahead of myself there. So we had const expression for the food color, and we got some functions here. Get contents will return the contents at a certain location in our grid. Uh, consume contents will attempt to consume the contents at that spot. Uh, well, it's it's for basically for when you eat the food. Spawn obstacle will spawn an obstacle. It's the same as before, basically. But we also have now a spawn food function that will spawn food at a random location. And we have, I changed the name of draw obstacles to draw cells because now it's not just obstacles. There's also food that can be drawn on the screen. So in board.cpp, we remove the goal because it's not a thing anymore. Now we have uh, check for obstacles becomes get contents. And here, instead of return has obstacle, you just return contents. Same deal. Now we have uh, consume contents, and all that does is it sets the contents to zero. But we also have a check to make sure that the contents at the location is equal to two. And the reason for that is because the only contents you can consume is the uh, food, and the number for food is two. So we just do a little bit of a sanity check here to make sure you're not doing something stupid then spawn obstacles the same 
as before, basically, and spawn food. Spawn food and spawn obstacle are basically the same thing, only one of them sets it to one, the other one sets it to zero. Otherwise, same idea. Uh, and now here, instead of checking, what was it before? Here we were checking for obstacle, I believe. Where is it? Check for obstacle. Before, and now what we're doing is we're getting the contents at that location and making sure that it is zero. So if it's not zero, that means there's already something there. Redo. That's the same for both of these. So both these functions are ex identical, except one sets the location to one for obstacle. The other one sets it to two for food. And what else? Draw cells. Now we have some tests here so we get the contents at the location in the loop and then if it's one we draw obstacle color if it's two we draw the food color and let's go to game.h what do we got here we get rid of goal get rid of goal here we don't have goal ain't a thing anymore and get rid of goal here in the constructor we got to spawn a single food onto the board to get the ball rolling and in here what we're doing is after we we calculate the next location the location for the move we get the contents of that location and then we do our test based on that so here we do the test for the snake dying and we check to see if contents is equal to one that signals that there was a or there is a obstacle at that location snake should die if contents is equal to two that means that there's food we should consume the food at that location spawn a new food and you know grow the snake also spawn an obstacle otherwise if it's not one it's not two it must be zero it's just empty place just move the goddamn snake down here draw obstacle or what is this goal is now gone i move board dot draw cells up here so this gives you the same old snake game, only instead of storing the goal in its own object, it's now stored on the grid, same as the obstacles. Everything else pretty much the same. Moving on, alright. Consolidate content spawning functions. You might have noticed, I also mentioned, that uh, basically, the functions for spawn food and the functions for spawn obstacle are identical almost the only difference is one sets it to one the other one sets it to two so instead of having two functions that are basically identical i just make one function called spawn contents and what it does is it takes in an extra parameter which is an int for the uh, the content that's going to be spawned and it does the same test and loop and when it spawn then when it spawns it it just sets it to the uh, content type that was passed in so this will work for any number of different kinds of content and it's just better in my opinion. Uh, board.h, yeah, we just get rid of spawn obstacle, spawn food, replace it with spawn contents. Game.cpp, now instead of spawn food, we spawn contents with two. And here, instead of spawning obstacle, we spawn contents with one. Spawn food is spawn contents with two. And there you go. What's next? Pick your poison. All right, so here's where we add the poison to the game. Lots of changes here. Well, a few changes. So, what do we do here? Uh, we have... Okay, so we added a, cup, a const expression here for the poison color. And I just changed the co comment here. Changed it to poison speed up. But yeah, so zero is empty, one is obstacle, two is food, three is poison. Board.h... What do we do here? We add for the draw cells, we add an extra check here to see if it's equal to three that means poison so draw a cell with the poison color and that's actually all there is in here all of the logic for this is going to be going in game.h and game.cpp so a couple of changes now um before the snick speed up factor was the amount of speed up that happened every single frame it's speed up by this amount by some calculation it's not really important but now we're only going to speed up every time you eat the poison. So speed up is going to be handled a little differently and it's going to be a lot larger because it's only going to happen, you know, once every so often when you eat poison instead of once every frame, which is 60 times a second. So here's a snake speed up factor. Basically works, I'll show you later, but it works by multiplying this number by the current, um, where is it? The current move period is multiplied by this number to get the new move period. And period i adjusted the minimum move period and 
I added a couple of constants here for the, the number of poison that starts off on the board and the number of food that's going to be on the board. So in game.cpp, what do we do? We got lots of things. Well, first of all, in the constructor, we got to spawn all of the poison and all of the food. So we just do a loop here, spawn a bunch of shit. Great. Down here, what we do is, if the contents are equal to three, we're meaning poison, so when we're moving the snake, if the contents of the place we're going to move to equal to three, we move the snake, we consume the contents there. Uh, we spawn new poison. And then we adjust the move period by multiplying it by the speed up factor and taking the maximum of that and the minimum. So we can never go below this value. And then we play the fart sound for that. And that's about it, I believe. That's all you really need. Did I miss something in board? I think that's weird. I could have sworn that consume contents. This is actually a bug here. Um, I think I must have fixed it later because I don't have any problems with it. But here, consume contents. We assert, we check to see that it's equal to two. But you can also consume poison. So I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why this works, but it works. I, maybe when I tested this uh, part, I tested it in release, which is always a problem. That's why I always test in debug. Anyways, this should be equal to two or equal to three. But for some reason, that didn't get changed. Not a big deal. Tweak sound effects and color. Okay, here we go. So, here's a few tweaks to the game. I make sound effect... What is this? So I make it... Change it from a sound to a sound effect. The fart sound. Because I wanted it to be, you know, a little different every time you ate. I could have... Maybe... No, I did... I, eat is already a sound effect. So I just make fart also a sound effect. Because if you eat a lot of poison in a row, you're going to get the same sound. It's nice to have a little bit of variation. Uh, what else we got here? Alright, so now when you play the fart sound, you've got to pass in the random number generator. And I also modify its audio a little bit. I make it a little louder for the game over fart. And I make it a little quieter for the poison eating fart. And what else? That's all there. Now, board.h. Poison color, I just modify it a little bit. Give it a little better color here. That's it. And in here, I just reorganized project files. Basically, a couple of these H files were in here with the CPPs. I just moved them up there. So, apparently, I made a mistake here. There's a problem. And uh, we could try, we could test it out. If I try to put this in debug, build, and then I try to eat some poison, what should happen is it should crash. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, here we go. Assertion failed. So, I fucked up a little bit. Abort, but it's okay. All I gotta do is go into board.cpp. Where is you? There you is. And we go to the place where fresh is the taste. And we go equal to two. Or, and I'll just copy and paste this because what the fuck. Paste that in there equal to three. So if it's equal to two or it's equal to three, then we can do the shit that we want to do, which is to say we can eat the poison, give ourselves sweet, sweet death. Yeah, there you go. Now it works fine. All right. So good. Let's commit that before I push this all up for you guys. We'll go to changes and fixed bug in uh, consume function missing assert condition that's yeah, good enough I guess I don't know whatevs anyways so that is how I implemented the poison stick as usual if you have any questions comments you know where to leave them on all the places and uh, I will see you soon with some more C++